How do I simulate point gravity on a particle system? Now, this is just cool. I don't know. I, th- I can't think of any other way to describe this. This is how you can attract particles to a, a point in space. And it's done through an attraction module. So I'm going to right-click here inside my module list, come down to attraction, and bring in a point attractor. Now, by default, this is not doing anything, and we can't even see the point to which we're attracting. So I'm going to click our little red X, and we can suddenly see that point. Now, that might not be so easy to see against a gray background. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my point attractor, scroll all the way down to the bottom of its properties, and let's pick a different color. I'll do a big, bright, brilliant green, just that everybody can see that. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the properties we actually have on the point attractor. First off, we have a position. It will help if we move this uh, at least a bit away from uh, the particle emission. So I'm going to take X and pull this over by 100 units. Now if we rotate the view, we can see that we will be attracting to a point over here to the side of the actual emitter, but we're not doing anything yet. Down underneath position, we have range. This is the area of effect for your attraction. Since we're 100 units away, you'd want at least 100 units worth of range. I'm going to set this to, well, let's do 150. Now, this means that any particles within this system that fell with outside this range will not get pulled toward this attractor, so keep that sort of thing in mind. Down underneath this, we have a strength. And if we increase the strength, say, to maybe 50, we start to, well, right now we're not getting anything. First off, we need to choose effect base velocity. Now, if we check this, we start pulling some particles over, but it's a little hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to jump over here to lifetime, and we'll just set our min and max lifetimes over to zero so that these particles will live forever. Now, watch out for that sort of thing. In this case, it's not going to create any uh, sort of hassle because we don't have enough particles to you know, cause a problem. But this is already starting to look a whole lot cooler than it was a few moments ago. Back down to the point attractor. The next important property we have is B override uh, velocity. If you check this uh, on, you are actually affecting the velocity of the particle. It's very important to know the difference. If this is switched off, you're not really affecting the velocity. You're just affecting the position. As far as each one of these particles knows, it's still moving upward like it was when it was born. So if you switch this, it starts to detect the circular velocity that's being... uh, is being granted here. They also have a strength by distance. This means that the closer you are to the center of the point, the stronger the pull is going to be. If this is switched off, you have kind of a uniform pull as long as you're within that sphere. So that's a little bit of everything. Now I'm going to do something just kind of fun here. The the how do I video part is technically over. I just want to do something. We're going to come over here to initial velocity and we're going to set min and max x and y over to zero. Let's come over, boom, zero. I'll take uh, min and z and set this to the same as max. So we have this straight line of particles. And we'll turn off our point attractor so that we can't see this. Okay, so we've got this funny and cool circle that's being drawn. Now let's play with our strength for just a moment. We'll come down to the point attractor and scroll down and grab the constant. Let's set this to 200. Now check this out. This is just too cool. We're drawing spirographs with particles. Now, I can't sit here and let the video carry on because I really can't sit here and watch this for hours on end, but that is a look at the point attractor, which wraps up this How Do I video.